Welcome to the South Carolina Motorplex. This is the Menard Chevy Show, a great mix of beauty and speed. Welcome to Orangeburg, South Carolina, about 40 miles south of the capital city of Columbia. I can tell you one thing, the folks here are car crazy and they love their Chevrolets. We've got Chevelles, Tri-5s and Caprices, you name it. It's really hard to pick a favorite but the judges have spoken, so let's take a look at our first award winner right now. Oscar Drummings is making me jealous with his Camaro. He's the winner of this week's Rock Auto Restored Award. Oscar Drummings is the proud owner of this beautiful 1969 Camaro, and you got this thing, you've, you've resurrected this from the ash heap. Tell that story. Yeah, I, I bought it back in 2003, worked on it for eight years, and did every bit myself, everything but the convertible top. I didn't put that on, I had a friend help me with that. But everything else, I did it myself, and it took me eight years to do it. How did you find this car? Uh, guy had it in a body shop that body shop spoke and working on it for him, and he got mad, and guy had it for six years and never did anything to it, so I was just in the right place at the right time. What made you look at this car and decide, this is the one that I want to make it to a project? It, I always had 69s. I had hard top, and I loved 69, and I always wanted convertibles, and, it's just hard to come by, and I always want a 69 convertible. And when did you declare this thing to be done? In 2011, I finished it up and took it to my first show and, and got best of show, so I figured I didn't have to do too much to it. But I ended up putting bigger wheels on it since I did it, and like I say, changed five speed. Best in show in the first show. You, you were undefeated. You should have quit while you were ahead, Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I had won that, and I done had it since I finished it probably 50 shows and won something in every one of them. Ain't always been best of shows, but I won something. You've got the, the Rock Auto Restored Award sitting here on the hood. How much do you rely on Rock Auto for what you put on this car? I, I, I bought quite a few parts from Rock Auto, and they fast shipping. They do a good job, and that's the first place I look when I get ready to get something. The interior, other than the dash, I put a, a Coleman dash and all in it, and got a uh, console out of another car and put in there and believe it or not come out of Acura <laughs> and it fitted right in there but everything else was pretty much original in it. How much do you drive the car? Uh, not a whole lot. I drive it probably on weekends me and my wife go get ice cream or something other. That's, that's about it. Congratulations to Oscar Drummings winner of this week's Rock Auto Restored Award. In my opinion, one of the most beautiful Chevrolets ever is the 1958 Impala. And this example, it's pretty much a survivor car, you say, right? Yes, sir, it sure is. It's a survivor car. Uh, everything under the hood's all original. Original paint, original fender well paint. All the paint in the truck's all original. The only thing we've changed, we had both front and rear bumpers re-chromed, and all the original chrome's still going down the sides. And under the hood, we have an original 348 with a single four barrel uh, power steering. That's about the only option to have was the power steering. My dream car 58 was the Rio red color, and I never could find one, and never could find one. I found out less than 1% of these cars are painted this color. And when I came across it, I said, well, it's a rare color, I'll buy this one. Now this car is more than just rare, it was actually meant to be, tell that story. Yeah, it was meant to be in my opinion, there's four omens I call it. When I went and looked at the car, I found out the gentleman's name was R.L. Davis, and he had Lou Gehrig's disease. Well, my wife's father passed away from Lou Gehrig's disease. Then I found out the color was Kay Coral, which is my mother-in-law's first name. Then the third omen was, I checked the build date on the car, and it was built June 6th of 1958, and that happens to be my wife's birthday. And then when we got the title back, the date on the title was September 17th, which is our wedding anniversary. So that's four omens the car was meant to be for me to buy it and bring it home. And you had to buy it, right? That's how you explained it to your wife? I had to buy it. She didn't even know I bought it when I brought it home. I parked it in the garage. She came home and opened the garage door. She couldn't get her Cadillac in because my Impala was sitting in there. She wasn't happy, but she wasn't mad either. And I explained the omens to her, and she was happy. How does it ride? Well, it drives like a Cadillac, even though it's just old Chevrolet. It floats right along with the suspension on it. You wouldn't even think it was a 60-year-old car. Ryan Wheat's 57 Chevy truck is our next producer's pick. What kind of condition did you find this truck in and, and where'd you find it? The truck was in Walterboro, South Carolina, which is about 40 miles, 40, 45 miles from uh, Somerville. And it was originally a pro street truck and uh, not running, no motor, no transmission, but had a lot of new sheet metal that came with the truck. So I purchased the truck and uh, 
found a motor transmission that I like and uh, went through it, put it in. Everything on it is my design. Had it up here and was able to put it to the ground. Uh, I did most of the body work on it. it we didn't really build it for uh, performance. We built it for driving and enjoying, you know, rolling down the road, the air conditioner blowing colds. The interior was done by Troy Swavar. He spent about six weeks doing the interior in this thing. It's a uh, hot rod red. He did a fabulous job. I mean, it's, it's gotten a lot of compliments on it. It rides great. I don't own a trailer. Everybody claims as a trailer queen, I drive it everywhere. I finished it in March a year ago, and it's got almost 9,300 miles on it. We're just getting revved up. More of the Menard Chevy Show from Orangeburg still to come. Menard Chevy Show is brought to you by Chris Austin's Chassis Works, the home of higher technology. Z-Max, the one product for your engine, transmission, and fuel system. Scoggin Dickey's Parts Center, your source for custom-built street-to-strip power. And by Stage 8 Fasteners, home of the world's best locking hitter bolt. Now included with each set of Cook's hitters. Go to stage8.com. Welcome back to the Menard Chevy Show in Orangeburg, South Carolina. I'm sitting in a stunning example of a 1970 Chevelle. Got the original 396 under the hood, and of course the original 8-track in the dashboard. Hey, this is the perfect place to start the Chevelle section of our show today. The OPGI Original Award goes to a car that stays true to its roots. Benny Bennett gets the honors this week for his gorgeous 66 Chevelle. How did you find this car? I was actually in the process of looking for a 66 or 67 and uh, run across this one about three years ago, I reckon. And I actually bought the car for resale purposes and, and uh, ended up going in it a little bit too far and ended up doing a full frame off restoration on the car. And, and uh, during the, the process, it's kind of a funny story. My, my wife was super ready for me to get rid of the car as soon as it was finished. Once I got the car nearly completed, um, her mind started changing. And then after she rode in the car, now she don't want to get rid of the car. So the car is not for sale now. The interior of the car is almost identical to how it was in 66. The exterior is original other than the suspension. I do have all the original suspension still for the car. All the sheet metal on the car is, is original, um, except for one of the doors. We replaced an outer panel. In fact, um, we had gotten it from OPG. How much of this car did you restore yourself? about 95% of it. The only thing that, that I didn't do was, was build the engine. I have a, a good friend of mine that does all my motor work. Let's talk about the engine. What's under the hood? It's a 468, um, full bolt main, um, big block Chevrolet. It is fuel injected. It's probably got about 600 horsepower. You pulled the original 396 from it. Pulled the original 396 with the 400 turbo out of it, um, mainly because the, the later model engines are a lot more dependable. They actually um, in my opinion, make more power. That, that was the purpose behind me in changing it. What does it feel like driving a car like this and you're getting looks from people? It's awesome, man. It's, it's great. That's what makes people want stuff like this. Is it, Unless you've driven one, it's just incredible. You know, the, all the attention that it gets from people when you go to gas stations and you pull in there and, and all the conversations that it makes. You know, so it's, it's a lot of fun. Benny Bennett, the deserving winner of the OPGI Original Award. Remodeled and renamed this offseason, South Carolina Motorplex is huge for racers around Orangeburg. How important is it for you to have this track for this community? Well, it's, it's very important, you know. I mean, this track setting empty just doesn't make any sense, you know. And, and there's just such a huge amount of racers in this area that, you know, we knew if we come here, built the track, fixed everything, we knew they'd show up. And they certainly did on our first annual Menard Chevy show. So, you know, we're pretty excited about that. What do you have on the schedule for 2019? Well, 2019, the first quarter is booked, obviously. You know, again, the ADRL races here, they're already booked for March. We have, you know, a lot of our points races that come in for uh, IHRA. And then there's a number of track rentals, and we have a big, big grudge, you know, racing. This is like the grudge capital of the world. A lot of people coming in to do grudge racing. Uh, we'll probably have the Street Outlaws back. They were here in February. That was a big event, so we're planning that for next year also. Jesse Robertson's 66 Chevelle is our next producer's pick. Your 66 Chevelle has uh, quite a personal story, doesn't it? It does. I had it for 53 years. Purchased it in April of 66 on my return from Germany, my first tour in the Air Force. Been in the family a long time, brought both my daughters home from the hospital, never born, has a lot of sentimental value. Kind of like family. 
I was a daily driver from 66 to 1988, and I parked it in uh, 88 and restored it in 99, did a frame off restoration on it. It's got a 66 396, but it did not come in this car, and it's been bored out 30,000, so it's actually a 402, what you call big block Chevy engine. Did you add that when you do the, did the restoration? No, I didn't. I put a 350 crate motor in it. And, uh, a friend came by the house and he knew where it was a big block. I told him I didn't particularly interested in it, but long story short, I went and looked at it. All the numbers were from 66 on that particular motor, this motor here, so I took a chance on it. Been out, out of a vehicle for 16 years when I bought it. I didn't know if it run, or, so I thought I might be buying a boat anchor, but it made it through the machine shop and it's been real good. I had good luck with it. How many guys have you met that have a car with this much personal history? You find very, very few original owners. And uh, the irony about that is I tried to trade it in 1970 after I got it paid for, and I couldn't afford to trade it. I was an E-5 in the Air Force staff sergeant with a wife and a baby. So I had to keep it, so I think somebody was looking out for me. Well, you can't have a Chevy show without a Corvette. And Rhonda Brewer has a beautiful 1982 collector's edition. Now, you don't have a very long history with this car, but uh, what caught your eye? Well, the color. Fell in love with it at first sight. Just had to have it. What have you and your husband done uh, since you got the car a few months ago? So it was a nice car to start with. We just started perfecting it. New weather stripping, uh, replaced the seats, even though the old seats really weren't bad. The new seats are perfect. Yeah, you know, just beautifying. You've beautified something that's already started out looking pretty good. What, what are some things about the collector's edition that make it unique? It's the only year that they did the back hatch to hinge up and open up and be functional. The T-tops are tinted a bronze color, where most of them are more of a gray. And the turbine wheels, only year for this style wheel in this decade. They did some similar back in the 60s. Was produced the year I graduated from high school. Was driving a MGB and wishing I had a car like this. Finally got it after many decades later. And uh, so how does it feel to finally drive the car that you dreamed about the entire time you were in high school? It's great. It's great. I, I feel like history finally became reality. And uh, was it worth the wait? Oh, sure. All good things are worth the wait. Still more to come. Some wheeling and dealing from the Menard Chevy Show in Orangeburg. Welcome back to the Menard Chevy Show in Orangeburg, South Carolina. This is the first year there's been a swap meet here in Orangeburg, and I'm actually standing in the only car here that I can afford. This is a 1961 Corvette frame and engine. Actually, you know, I probably can't afford it, but there's something here I can afford. In fact, there's something here for everybody. This is our first time here. And you never know what you're gonna find, and the people you meet, it's amazing. You really never, ever know what you're gonna see. We got beautiful cars, we got cars that need work. To find that part, to get that car that's been in the garage for a decade, it's magic. The people, it's friends for life. Now I believe this might be my favorite item here at the swap meet. This is a, a junior car from the Soapbox Derby, just like the one I raced uh, with my late great dad about 35 years ago. A couple of cool items I found here as well. I found an old grill made out of a rim, found an Elvis picture that I want to take home with me, and of course, a beautiful ad for a Chevy Nova station wagon. And speaking of Chevy Nova station wagons, well, there's a lot of ground to cover here at the Menard Chevy Show in Orangeburg, and I thought I'd take a break by tailgating here with my good friend Larry. He's the owner of this beautiful Chevy 2 Nova, and this is a car you've done a ton of work on yourself, right? Yes, um, this is my first time of trying to do a frame off for better lack of words for a Nova, mm -hmm. not really having a frame, and uh, probably be the last one I do, because four years of um, picking at it. What kind of condition was the car in when you bought it? You know, it was an original car, a little six-cylinder automatic. Um, body was in really good shape, a little bit of rust. I went out and bought a welder and learned how to weld. Let's talk about the nuts and bolts. What do you have under the hood? Well, it's just a little 355 Chevy, um, a mild cam, um, around 350 horse, somewhere along in there because she was built for cruising. She wasn't built for, you know, going fast. It's not a trailer queen. You actually like to take it on some family vacations as well. Where have you had this car? Um, we go to North Carolina a lot. And since we're down in the Charleston area, and that's about a four or five hour ride. Um, been to Louisville a couple of times. Um, 
the car shows and stuff like that there, but Hendersonville, North Carolina is kind of our place to go to take a little vacation during the summertime. What is it like uh, to drive a car that you've built yourself? Yeah, you, know, you know, it's a very rewarding thing. It's um, you, you get to the point to where you're frustrated a lot of days, but at the end, you know, you've accomplished something. And, um, and you, you almost have this let down because now it's over. You have nothing left to do. And, um, but um, I'm not sure if I would go with this extensive on another car, get a little old for that now, but um, at least I got the one under my belt. A 1933 Oldsmobile is our next producer's pick. Well, this is a 33 Oldsmobile, but uh, it's got some Chevrolet power under the hood. Tell us about that. It got a Chevrolet 350 with all 700 R transmission, Camaro Ren, Mustang 2 front end. What is it like uh, driving this thing? I enjoy it. I mean, I like riding around in it. Tell me about the interior. Tell me what the car is like inside. Well, it rides quiet, good cold air. So it has air conditioning. That's a really important thing as far as I'm concerned in a collector's car. What are your plans to do with this uh, going down the road? I'm going to ride it if somebody come along and want it worse than me. <laughs> Have you always been a car guy? I got a thing for old cars. I just like to look at them and, you know, check them out good. When we come back to Orangeburg, a beautiful Camaro with a great racing history. Our Chevy show is brought to you by Proformance Unlimited, your crate engine experts, building your dream and ours one engine at a time. Willwood Disc Brakes, high performance disc brakes and brake components. Exalta Coating Systems, we paint winners. And by Borla, the world's most winning exhaust. Welcome back to the South Carolina Motorplex here in Orangeburg. Now, when you come to a Menard Chevy show, you get more than just a car show. You get an experience, and talk about an experience. Larry Dixon, three-time NHRA champ. You've got a two-seater top fuel dragster here. What inspired this? Well, the thought was the, the fact that there's all kinds of ride-along programs in all forms of motorsports, and drag racing needs to have, if we're the quickest and fastest sport, we should have the quickest and fastest ride-along. Hence, two-seat top fuel car. What do you want fans to feel when you hit the gas in this thing? Well, my original thought was I wanted to go skydiving, but there wasn't a bone in my body that wanted to jump out of a plane all by myself with a chute. You don't want to drive a top fuel car all the way down the track by yourself? Have a three-time champ do it for you. So that's, that's what we're doing with this car here. Well, no doubt this is the fastest car on the premises, and the second fastest car is our next award winner. Brought to you by Zing T, this Camaro is naturally cool. Marco, let's start with the obvious. What makes this car unique? It's the only silver Z28 that they built in 68. Uh, and it's painted 66 Cadillac Starlight Silver from the factory. So not only it, it's the only 68 Camaro that got painted silver, it's the only Camaro in the world that ever got factory painted Starlight Silver. I've owned a car 30 years. I'm the third owner. Bill Drevo's the original owner. He bought the car new as a street car. 488 gear. This car was ordered with 488s and a, and a Cal induction, uh, Cal Planum air cleaner. And he drove it on the street a couple weeks and his buddies talked him into racing it. And he raced it at Bud's Creek, Maryland and won eight weeks in a row. So they turned it into a race car. After that, he set 105 national records with this car and he won 25 points meets and eight national events. And no other car has this record. And, and that in conjunction with the car's only got 1900 miles on it. And, every, and just about every piece on this car is assembly line to this car, makes it a very, very unique car. You went through great pains to make sure this car wasn't exactly perfect, right? Right, we, when we refinished the car, we did not restore the car, we refinished it. And we just blew it apart, put new paint on it, polished everything, put it back. But we won't put it to back together. It still has the factory flaws that you would have in a brand new car. We just wanted it to look like a new car that was old. Thanks to Zing T for bringing us a look at that naturally cool 68 Camaro. Teddy Mueller's 68 C10 pickup is slammed and it is slick. So Teddy, you've got a 68 C10 pickup and it's not exactly the factory color. Talk about that first. Color is off a Toyota pickup. It's called Rage Quicksand. Truck's got LS3 engine in it and the wood in the bed is actually a redwood tree. One solid piece of wood. Under the bed, we have a uh, Porter-built suspension with AccuAir uh, E-level system, airbag system, all detailed. 
now. Not only has the truck been lowered, but uh, the seats have been lowered as well. You've lowered the driver. Yes, sir. Shorted, uh, lowered the seat two inches with brackets. That's all we did with it. And uh, what do you know about the engine? How, uh, what kind of horsepower does this thing put out? That I'm not sure yet. I'm getting ready to tune it to find out for sure. But we're looking at least 500 horsepower. Now it's it's still a C10 inside from 1968, but you added a few creature comforts. Yes, sir. It has the uh, Dakota digital gauges in it. Um, the, of course, radio delete but it does have Bluetooth under the seat and big speaker behind the seat. How much have you driven the truck? The truck's been driven actually from South Carolina to Panama City Beach, Florida before. And so it's probably got about 800 miles on it. What are your plans to do with it uh, in the future? Just cruising, that's what it's built. Drive it, enjoy the highway. What kind of looks do you get when you're riding down the road in something like this? Hey, people love it. They, you get the thumbs up everywhere you go. It's, it makes you feel good that, you know, people recognize the work that's been done to it and what all has, is involved in, in doing something like that. People enjoy what you've got. And we hope you've enjoyed this visit to Orangeburg. See you next time on the Menard Chevy Show.